Alright, hi there, I'm Michael. Um, today I've got a computer to put together. Um, so it's a um, Ryzen 7 5800X processor. Um, they chose a um, IQ from Corsair uh, H150i Elite Capellix uh, liquid cooler. Um, motherboard is a Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi. Um, solid state drive is going to be a one terabyte Samsung uh, 980 Pro. Very nice. Uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM running at 3600 megahertz uh, CL16 on the timing. And the EVGA uh, RTX 37 Black uh, XC3 graphics card. Power supply is a Corsair RM850X uh, fully modular power supply. And the case, which I haven't taken out of the box yet, is a IQ4000X RGB mid-tower case, which uh, should be big enough to hold this cooler, I'm thinking, hopefully. I haven't looked at that. We'll figure it out. Um, all right. There's some stuff out of the way here. That's the keyboard. First thing we're gonna do is get it up and running just on top of uh, the motherboard's box. Adam and Felix, how y'all doing? I'm doing good. Pretty busy today. Went to a few people's houses and both of them had printer issues. Uh, among um, one person also had a um, some malware take over his uh, his browser page. We got that cleaned up. So this is a Wi-Fi antenna. I'll leave that just in the box. Let's see what's under here. So we have a manual for the motherboard, which will come in handy. Got some SATA cables and back plate. Move that there. Not back plate, IO shield, that's what that thing is. Hey Zulu and Modi. And Tyler the Bluey fan. Second time watching, hey Adam. Live builds of computers. All right, so yeah, that's a that's a tough gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi. Um, let's see, anything troublesome? So I noticed it doesn't have a USB-C um, header on the motherboard. If the case has one, which I can't tell by looking at the, the picture on the box, that won't work unless we get him a, a little extra add-in card. But that's okay. That's, that's not a big deal. Unless you really need USB-C, you know, on the front of your front of your case. But it's like a, if you if if your motherboard doesn't have it, the add-in card to allow it to connect. Is like thirty bucks, so it's it's not that big of a deal. Oh, wait a minute, I need that box. All right, so motherboard on top of the box. Um, let's get the processor installed. Loboette, how you doing? Most people buy laptops. The, the, the vast majority of computers that are brought to me to work on or upgrade or fix, you know, in some fashion, are laptops. It's, they're just more popular. Okay, so AM4 um, CPU. To install it, you move this little arm to the bottom just a little bit and bring it up. Get in 
here. So you want the triangle on one corner to be uh, on the opposite side from the arm. If you look on the um, on the socket, you can kind of see a triangle there, but just grab it like that and rotate it so it'll go right on top. And they usually just fall in. Sometimes you have to give them a little bit of a shimmy or a press. Yeah, that one had to be pressed just a little bit. And then you lower the arm and that's installed. Let's do RAM next. Yeah, the I was I was looking at the 5800X. On Amazon, it's $200 off. You can get it for like 250 bucks or right around there. It's it's kind of crazy. $200 off the uh, the initial price. All right, so this has been a standard for a long time. If you have two sticks of RAM and four slots, you put the two sticks in the second and fourth slots from the processor. And this one's just got uh, little clips you have to push up at the top. This one doesn't have it on the bottom. It's fairly typical. So to put in RAM, this is DDR4 RAM, but it's the same thing with DDR5. There's a notch slightly off center that matches up with a bit of plastic over there on the uh, on the cooler you just kind of lay it into the guides on the on the sides and give it a push straight down oh, a little extra didn't feel like it went in but it did let's see if this one's gives us more of a click Okay, that one had a little bit of a, a crunch to it. That's what I was. That's what I typically hear. All right. Solid state drive, which is going to go right here. Oh, you know what? We do need something else from the the motherboard box. I didn't notice it, but I bet you it's in here. Just in a bag at the bottom. Yeah, there they are. So these are risers and screws. There's two of them and let's go ahead and install if we can two of them. So one's gonna go right here. There's another M.2 slot down here that I'm going to take off this heat sink and go ahead and install the uh, the riser and the screw. Yes, yeah, so it'll go right here. And we need both of them, so we can mang we can mangle the the bag. <laughs> it didn't really help to get them out any easier. Thought it would, but no, nah, it didn't. There we go. Okay. So there's there are shorter um, M.2s. You can have one this long, that long, and this long, and of course this one. This is the most typical. It's 80 millimeters from uh, from the connector on the motherboard. So yeah, I'm just installing this. So in the future, if they do have a M.2 solid state drive, they want to put in. All you have to do is take that screw out, lay in the uh, M.2, and screw it in. I'm hoping this goes back on without a problem. Yeah. Alright, down, down, and we'll do the same for, for this guy. So, yeah, it's um, 22 millimeters. 60 me no 42 millimeters 60 millimeters 80 millimeters and then 110 for the different lengths but again 80 millimeter is the most common which is what we have here
Yeah, Moby. If you wanna, if you wanna send, uh, send the link it over. Um, Um, you you may be able to do that in chat without a problem. Um, you can give it a try. If not, just email it to me and let me know it's there. So when you're putting in uh, M.2 solid state drives, uh, this is NVMe. There's also uh, SATA based, um, and those generally um, so the M M.2 NVMe ones they're, just, they're better and they're newer. They're higher 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 bandwidth. They're just better. Have a little cut right here in them. The SS, um, the SATA based ones usually have another cut here. Not always, but that's what you look for is to, is to match up that little notch with a bit of plastic there. You put it in at about a 30 degree angle and you kind of wiggle it in like that. And then when you push it down and find your screw, you can hold it down and screw it in like that. Okay. So we got the processor, the RAM, and the solid state drive in. Um, the CPU cooler is going to be a little bit cumbersome to do at the moment because we're really just looking to get video on the screen. Um, and for that we're going to need their graphics card and their power supply. Acer Nitro. I, I haven't had much uh, much experience with the Acer um, laptops, but that being said, my first laptop was an Acer a very long time ago, and it did okay. It it was it was a little on the low end when I bought it, so it wasn't very fast. But I think I only spent like 400 bucks on it, which back then was a good deal. So Ryzen 5 5600H, a RTX 3060, and 8 gigabytes of RAM, 5 12 gigabytes of NVMe solid state um, capacity, Windows 11. Okay, yeah, that uh, that model number there is, uh, it, it would have brought it up, that uh, AN55515. Uh, five five. Well, dang, your your one for school is pretty darn good, Tyler. Uh, had him. What are the risers for in the motherboard box? Usually, only have to use one of the screws. Uh, uh, sorry, it moved. I'm I'm I lost what I was reading. Yeah, um, you you'll very often get um, some extra risers in the, in the box that uh, that comes um, with the case, and those are just for in case you have a very large motherboard or just an unusual motherboard, so you can you can add them so the board is fully supported. And the idea of the risers themselves, they're also called standoffs, is to raise up the motherboard off the back of the case. So it doesn't um, doesn't short like electrical short on the back of the motherboard. Okay. Well, this is about the least baller uh, packaging I've seen in a while for a graphics card. Is this just a big clamshell? Open this thing with it. Break and fall apart. I'm trying to find a seam, but I guess this is it. Wow, I could easily cut myself on that. That can't be how this is supposed to open. Oh, okay. I was overthinking it. You just kind of do that. And you're in. Alright, so
So cover on the bottom, I'll take off. No covers on the back. There's a big peel. Big peel to do. cover there. Right, well this is the main reason I put this on the, the motherboard box. So the, the faceplate can go over the left side of the motherboard. Oh, another peel on the back. Over the I.O. Okay. So yeah, uh, without the motherboard box this would bump into the table. So Right over the slot and down. Push. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, power supply. Potato dude. <laughs> he caught me live, huh? This is later in the day than I usually stream. Typically, it's uh, I start before noon, Central Standard Time. But we were out until about an hour ago. All right. All right, main power cable. And here's all the, the modular cables. Definitely need 24 pin, that's what that is. Let's see, there's a CPU which connects up here and there's actually a spot for two CPU there's there's uh, there's a spot for I think an eight which is two fours and uh, also another four that's PCI Express for the graphics card we'll need one of those to be good SATA power we'll probably need for the case let's see there's another VGA Another SATA. Okay, I think this is another CPU. What does it say? Yeah, it is. So it's got eight to go to the power supply, and there it is. There's listed a CPU. So we'll be breaking one of these in half in order to connect uh, uh, the eight and the four. I think that's all I need for this build. The rest of that I'll just put in the motherboard box for future use. Nice looking power supply. What does this say? Uh, silent operation at low to moderate loads. Okay, so it's basically just saying that if you don't have that much going on in your computer, the fan might not spin, and that's okay. Right. Well, let's plug this thing in. I see. I see. Um, I've I've had a computer. Uh, computers brought to me probably three or four times with this issue. Um, so the twenty-four pin plugs into the motherboard. People. Some people have trouble realizing what this is, it, and it's just it's two separate connectors. So it's it's got uh, how many is that? It's got eighteen here and six there which makes 24 and I've had people only plug in one of these and then leave like this part out and then the computer doesn't power on because it needs all 24 of those pins okay come up here all right now this is for the graphics card and, and people call these pigtails it's one connection to the power supply, and then it gives you two separate six plus two pins to go into there. And in some in some some configurations, sometimes you can be better off just using one of these and just leaving this alone, and then getting another cable for like a separate connection. Um, I don't know how prominent that is, or you know how likely that is, but if you've got the extra cable, you might as well use it, right? All right. So PCIe versus uh, and CPU. Same thing there. 
Let's go ahead and plug one of them here. And here's our second one. And this one I'm gonna break break apart. There's little plastic bits right there that you have to kind of squeeze together as you separate the two. I don't know how difficult that's. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Okay, uh, let's plug Got in here. And yeah, I haven't looked at the uh, the case yet. More than likely, it's, it's going to have a, a SATA um, power connection for running the RGB and possibly the fans that are already in it. So yeah, and these are six pins and you just plug them in basically where they fit. Um, SATA, PATA, Parallel AT, that's, that's an old one. Uh, yeah, that'll be fine there. Okay, let's get these plugged into the motherboard. So when you look at it, there's a little bit of plastic right here that this part grips onto. So when you go to take it out, you have to kind of squeeze down, push down there as you pull, or wiggle and pull, really. All right, saddle, we don't need plug-in right now. Okay, this is six plus twos for the graphics. Now, let's see, they're meant to be Kind of jam together like that. And same thing, a little bit of plastic that uh, clip holds onto. Just kind of mash them together and get them in. them together and uh, this is gonna be a pain I can feel it doesn't quite want to go on right you have to kind of force it uh, let's see. turn this thing around and get it in there Okay, I didn't didn't plug this one in yet. We really only need one of these for the test. So this is what I was talking about. So it's got eight right there and then an extra four. You don't really need to plug in the, the extra four unless like you're really overclocking. And when I say really overclocking, I mean like liquid nitrogen kind of level of overclocking. Okay, but I'm gonna leave the CPU together on that end and plug this guy in over here yeah. and then when, once these are broken apart you can plug in either one of them to the extra four again not really a requirement if I didn't do that if the power supply didn't have that extra four pins it'd still be okay all right um, let's go ahead and take the um, should have done this before Go ahead and take off the, the mounting. Well, actually, wait a minute. Does this thing use the AMD mounting stuff? Or does it have its own? I don't remember. I, I think I installed this or maybe the, uh, the two fan version not long ago. Okay. Well, we're just looking to get video out of this thing. It won't take long. The CPU won't overheat. And the amount of time we're gonna have it on all right, plugging in HDMI. And let's see, mouse and keyboard. Into the motherboard. And these are just little wireless dongles that go along with uh, a Logitech mouse and keyboard wireless down here. I think I've already got the, the monitor set right. Yeah, it's HDMI. All right. 
main power plugged in, main switch on. We've got some RGB going over here. So we should be able to just touch together the power button pins, which are right here. It comes on. All right. Let's see how long it takes to get video. Power supply uh, fan spun up and it's spitting back down. It looks like it's going to stop and that's okay. Alright, still waiting on video. There it comes. Blue lights on. Video is probably going to, yeah, it went right to the BIOS. So there's our RAM. Um, two sticks of 16 gigabytes. Um, one terabyte solid state drive. And um, that's it. Yeah, let's turn it off. Okay, um, that's all the testing we needed to do out, outside of the case. Let's get it undone. So whenever you're taking out power, what you're doing is you're squeezing right here as you pull. And it's really that sh a shimmy that you need to do as opposed to just pulling straight up. Here it is again on the 24 pin. Shimmy and up. 8 pin up. And 4 pin up. Alright. Get the power supply out of the way. Alright, down there be fine. Graphics card. To pull it out, you have to push down right here. Kind of eject it. And as you pull up, it comes out. All right, set the motherboard over there. And let's get the case out. Ah, how's everybody doing? Ah, ah look at chat for a second. You meant the risers that come with the M.2 screws. Yeah, I, I, I really wish the manufacturer would just go ahead and put those on the motherboard instead of having them in a little, uh, little plastic bag that's easy to throw away if you don't know what it is. I want to say Gigabyte. The last Gigabyte motherboard I, I, I looked at and used um, had them already installed. If you want to, if you want to look and see how much this would be to build, if you go look on uh, the description of the the stream, there's links to uh, to buy all this stuff on Amazon. Yeah, Moby, uh, Moby Dave. I mean that that I mean that's a it's it's a it's it's all good. I mean, the eight gigabytes of RAM is a little low for a gaming computer, but that's most likely easily upgradable if you take the bottom of that laptop uh, uh, off. And the RAM stick probably right there. You just add another one. Uh, and you know, the only other thing is the price. How much is that? Uh, is that Acer Nitro for you? I'd say if it was under 1300 bucks where I am, it would be a good deal. Yeah, Zulu, I, I know it's just a daisy chain of connectors, but I, I, people call them pigtails. Um, I think, I, I, when I say people, I probably mean Jay, of Jay's two cents. I've heard him call them pigtails a lot. Right, let's make some room.
life hack anytime you're getting something big out of a box like this, if you just turn it upside down, lift the box off, it makes it a lot easier. with thumb screws. I think you just pull here and it pops off. Yeah. So it kind of goes out this way and allows you to take it off. Hmm. Yeah, this cooler, the cooler he brought is not going to work. It's way too big. It's only got a spot for a dual fan, like a 240 millimeter radiator, radiator at the top, or maybe a, a 280. It's a little wider, but there's not going to be a place to I don't think put a, um, a triple rad in here. There's three fan positions here, and yeah, we could move those, but that's not enough space to put a, um, a radiator. Yeah, now, even if we tried to put the fans on the outside, it wouldn't fit. Okay, so the cooler will not work, which means that's pretty much the end of the stream because I can't uh, I can't properly cool the uh, the processor in this case. Okay, we're leaving this off for now. Chances are we're gonna send. I would say keep the case and get a different cooler. Ideally, one that's not liquid cooled because we can put a, a full height um, uh, Noctua right here. Yet another time that someone has not asked me beforehand and just brought me parts. Let's see. Yeah, I saw. Um, I, I saw. I saw the reveal for the 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 RX uh, seventy nine hundred. Uh, XT and XTX and you know at the at the prices they're fantastic it looks like a thousand dollars for the high end and only a hundred dollars less for the the slightly lower end one which I think the um, the lower end one the nine hundred dollar one it has four gigabytes less of RAM but I don't think they mentioned uh, the difference like in the uh, in the compute units or whatever um, might also be different in the um, on the card it might have uh, uh, the the higher wind one may may have more compute units or whatever they call them on AMD. Uh, Brutal Pizza, I'm doing good. Brutal Pizza says, have you ever had issue in old motherboards that that give inconsistent RAM errors due to CPU not making proper contact with the socket pins? Uh, that. I've seen that on the larger processors, like the thread, the thread rippers. Um, I haven't seen that on the more standard, um, um, smaller um, chips. So, like this one, it's it's got pins on the processor. What uh, what Brutal Pizza is asking about is the uh, the ones that have the pins on the motherboard and then the pads on the on the processor. And I've only seen that that issue on like Thread Ripper. Yeah, David, uh, we're 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 gonna recommend a, a a nice beefy cooler to take care of the the 5800X. If he doesn't uh, if he doesn't want to uh, to switch to air cooler and he wants wants liquid, we can 
send back this one that we haven't even opened yet which should be easier to send back and get the uh, the 240 millimeter version of this and I think it'd still be good enough to to cool um, the 1500X it's just I think you'd be better off without a liquid cooler just a nice big be quiet or Zotac uh, yep uh, Zulu uh, we're, we're on the same page uh, uh, NHD 15 would do great that or the uh, the be, be quiet equivalent of it It'd be cheaper too this thing's 150 both of those the, the the big be quiet and the d15 from noxua are just a little over a hundred dollars usually uh, arnold abert asks how much do you charge to build a pc like this uh, 160 dollars is what i charge to put a computer together and that includes Updating the BIOS, installing Windows, updating drivers, um, and stress testing, thermal testing. Yeah, I've heard that about the uh, the NHD fifteen, the uh, the newer ones coming out, uh, the new new CPUs coming out from Intel, and the uh, the seven thousand series. Um, AM5 stuff from uh, from AMD, uh, the, at the high end at least. Um, most air, air coolers just can't handle them. Yeah, um, David, I, I think we've I think we've used the the, the uh, either the um, the D15 or the um, the Be Quiet equivalent on the 5800X, and it did it did great. Hmm. Well, we know it works. We, we know the, the computer, it came up and gave us a video. Now it's just a matter of putting it all in a case and uh, putting a cooler on it. Um, and yeah, I, I, I don't think I could do that today, certainly not during the stream. Um, let's look and see. We can pick him out a good cooler. Uh, set down the camera. All right. Amazon. So a NHD 15. Black version's 110. And it could be here in the morning. For 10 bucks less, you can get the ugly version, which there's no, there's no doubting that is uglier than that. It just is. Okay, so 110 for that. Um, strong possibility. Let's duplicate that. And let's look at the Be Quiet. I think it's the Dark Rock Pro 4. Yeah, that's it. It's 20 bucks cheaper for the black version as opposed to the NHD 15 and this one should be uh, up to the task as well at uh, 250 watt TDP what is the uh, what do they say the TDP on this one is or can be cooled up to uh, that TDP does Noxua say no, they may not say Control F and TDP search. No, they don't say. Let's copy that and do a Google search and throw TDP on it. List of specifications from Noxua. <laughs> Max TDP says CNSPR, which is a link I'm clicking. Uh, 
Okay, so they they don't they don't release things in TDP. It's it's this Noxua standardized performance rating. So it's their own rating, um, and this one's the best. Okay, uh, it's got a NSPR rating of one hundred eighty three. It it would be okay. Um, it does it does talk about um, wattage of CPU. Okay, but yeah, you know, it either one would work. And you know, I think that looks a little bit better than the Noctua. So there's the Noctua. So that as opposed to close that, that. I kinda like the look of that a little bit better. But I will give them the option. Um and oh the, the other the other option. Um so it if they want the uh It's a 100, oh, come on, cooperate. It, it, I'm having the hardest time just highlighting something. Okay, 100i. No, not a 110i, a 100i. Uh, wow, somebody's smoking crack on that one. I mean, who the hell would pay that? What is this? Let's not search in electronics. Let's put that in all departments. And it is an elite. Let's put elite on there. Well, damn. That's expensive. 160 bucks for a white version. And there's the black version. Okay, so the, the white is, is more expensive. Oh, but you can't get it until like November 28th. That sucks. And this was this. This is pretty much what he currently has. That's not going to fit in the case. Well, uh, well, let's see. Um, so we don't want to wait for that. Let's do a Google search for it. All right. Links to Corsair. Links to Amazon. Best Buy. Maybe it's in stock locally. I can just go pick it up for him. But again, not today. Uh, yeah, it says it's available. So if he wants this one, it's uh, it's 150 bucks, and I'll I can go pick it up for him tomorrow morning. And do it. Otherwise, we will go with either this one, which won't be here till the sixth. So the be quiet's kind of out, even though it looks nicer. Let's go back to the Noxua. So the Noctua could be overnighted. I'll be here at 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. I think that's what I'll recommend to him. It's cheaper. It's less likely to fail. It'll do a fine job of cooling. I mean, it's the way to go as far as I'm concerned. But again, it's his computer. It's his money, right? An MSI Cordex R Gaming. Uh, 12th Gen, 12 12700F, 3060, 1TB SSD, and a 2TB hard drive for for extra storage. Be, that's nice. 16GB um, of RAM would be the, uh, the way to go on that. Ultion. Um, going from a GTX 1080 to a 3070, that would be a significant uh, uplift. And Modern Warfare at 1440p with a 3070, yeah, I'd say so. Decent FPS, yeah. So David, you've you've got a you've got that Noxu on a 5950x, yeah, and that's that's higher than this one, and it does a good job, right? So yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, smoke smoking the ganj on on some of those prices, right? Hmm. 
Well, sorry for the uh, the anticlimactic. I really was hoping for, to to get this all together and up and running and stress test it uh, before we ended the stream. But we can't do that without a proper cooler that'll fit in the case. You know, I'm I'm wondering about the the, the new chips from uh, from AMD, the seven thousand series. They they if you if you set them to this performance mode, which I haven't dealt with this yet, but supposedly you set it to this uh, this performance mode in the BIOS. And it will just immediately um, run the processor until it gets up to 85 degrees Celsius, and it'll stick there. So the better cooling you have, the higher um, um, in uh, in like uh, frequency it can be boosted up. Is the idea, but uh, I haven't played with it that much, and I haven't actually seen many videos of other content creators playing with it very much. Um, I think a lot of people um, just immediately had to switch over to reviewing um, the new Intel stuff, the 13th gen stuff from Intel. And now you know, that's that's out and we're learning about it and now we get uh, new graphics cards from, from AMD. It's uh, exciting times. So the 5950 runs cooler than the 5800X for some reason, you say, David. I hadn't heard that. The 5950X has 16 gigabytes of RAM, but they are, or not 16 gigabytes of RAM, 16, 16 CPU cores. Um, but they are in, in two different um, CPU dies that are stuck together. I wonder maybe if that's the reason. I think it doesn't boost to high, um, as high a clocks as the uh, the 5800X can. That may be the, the reason for it um, being cooler. Hmm, okay. Go back and read some chat. Full can it. Mike from Montreal, how you doing? Oh, that's right. EVJ uh, is getting out of the graphics card business. I, 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 I did not put that together. Um, I, from, from what I understand, um, you know, it's, it's a good card. Um, and they're, they're supposed to uh, su fully support them for the, the life of, uh, of the warranty. So they'll, they're supposed to hold back uh, cards uh, so they can send them out as uh, um, replacements as needed. Tyler, I, I wonder, um, so it's a gaming desktop with all that. Yeah, a 3060 would go well with that processor. If you could spend a little extra money and get a, a 3070, you'd be, you know, a little better off, but that's always true, you know. <laughs> if you have a little extra money, you're, you're better off. Price difference between a 5800X and a 5700X, is it worth a $100 price difference? Not in like dollars per performance. No, it's not. Um, if it was 50 bucks, I'd say yeah. But 100 it's, it's a bit much. Um, 
probably wouldn't be able to tell. So it's a 5700X versus a 5800X. User benchmark. Hmm. Down here, it's uh, it's like one or two percent faster. Very close. For an extra hundred bucks, I wouldn't say that'd be worth it. Yeah, doing searches like that on Google, you know, the two things you're trying to compare against with uh, verses in the middle is a, a great way to figure things like that out. You can even, even come down here to like the video section and they'll have uh, videos of, uh, you know, the, the two different components you're wanting to compare actually running in games, showing you the difference in the, uh, the FPS and the 1% the, the lows and stuff like that. Well, Steve says uh, the 5700X is what the 5800X should have been. Huh. So I think Steve has made his, uh, his feelings known. Feelings backed up by stats, no doubt. No doubt, Steve. The tech Jesus. Cool. All right, um, let's see, back to full cam. Donnie, which is better for 1080p for the 5800X, a 3070 or a 3070 Ti? I mean, 37, uh, any any extra thing is going to be better. Um, the question there is how much is the uh, the 70 versus the 70 Ti to you? And is that is that worth it? And that would be the same thing. 3700, I'm um, sorry, 3070 versus 3070 Ti in a Google search you will find one of those web websites that will tell you what the performance difference is. And you can use that to, to a $100 difference. I would say no. Just, you know, w without even looking, that, that $100 difference uh, between a, a TI versus non-TI is um, probably not worth it. It even filled it in for me. I put in 3070 and then VS and it filled it in. It knew what I wanted. So the TI version, it's saying here is 9% faster overall. 12% in some ways. 8% there, but still $100. That seems, seems a lot. Maybe. But no. As opposed to going from a, how much is go, going from a 3070 to a 3080? It's probably quite a bit of a jump, isn't it? Versus the 3080. If I can type right. Yeah, it'd be a bigger jump, but probably also a bigger jump in price. Yeah, here it's over $200. So, I would say no. Uh, going from a a TI or uh, from a, a non TI to a TI um, of the thirty seventy for a hundred bucks, probably not worth it. But I mean, that's one of those things that depends. Um, it can it can make a difference because uh, like pages like this, it shows you overall lots of different games what uh, what performance differences you can expect. But really, what is what is the performance difference in the games that you're playing? That's a little bit more useful. And for that, I mean, if you put, so if we did back to this in, let's say Battlegrounds.
So this is with a different CPU. But the FPS is like 20 higher. And see it shows multiple games. And this is this is with the, the processor being a uh, 9600K. But you could, you could uh, include your, your processor in the search and you more than likely find a, a YouTube video showing you the differences in FPS that you would get. I'm sorry, I don't know if y'all could see that. I, I may have had it on the wrong input. Yeah, um, the ghost terminal and uh, and David about the um, the three D cache that uh, that they put on the on the five thousand series uh, it made a huge difference and they've pretty much come out and said they're going to take the seven thousand series CPUs and make one or two three D V cache versions of them and that will get all those benefits and it, it makes me wonder if that's why some of the the sales aren't that good on the seven thousand series because people are going to wait. Um, until the, the 3 d v cache comes out. Yep. Yeah, um, you know, from, from last generation of processor you can get now for, I think it's like 350 or $400, is um, it, it's keeping up with some of the, the 13th gen stuff from Intel on certain titles, just like Ghost Terminal says. Very true. Yeah. Hamza, it's a crazy price. Um, I, I was expecting like fourteen hundred bucks would be the price they uh, they put it at. They did it for a thousand. Muhammad, the uh, the the thirteen four hundred F. Uh, I don't I don't think they've released that information. I, I don't think I, I've I've seen any um, any rumors about it. It's more than likely going to be a really good processor, though. I mean, it's. It's going to have probably six cores, most likely. And for the price, it should be really nice. Hmm. All right, well, I think I'll, I'll end the stream there on a, on a high note. Um, I'm, I'm going to give, uh, give the client a call and tell them that the, process, or the, uh, the cooler they chose isn't going to fit in the case they chose and give them the options. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for coming and hanging out and being good citizens of the internet. I, I notice y'all helping each other. That's always good to see. And um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll see you um, in the next one, next stream. If I can if I can get him um, a cooler um, tomorrow morning, one way or the other, either having it delivered here or going to uh, to pick it up, I'll do a stream like tomorrow in the morning. But we'll see how see what happens. But yeah, thanks, uh, y'all. Have a good rest of your day or night or morning, wherever you are. Um, and yeah.